Hello everyone and welcome to US Computer Solutions for another how to tutorial. My name is Joey and today I will be showing you how to fix a dead computer or a computer that is turning on and you hear the fans but nothing is happening on the screen. We're gonna unplug the screen. The screen should be in like this unless you have an HDMI cable which you can just pull out. So the VGA cable comes out like this after releasing the screws. The USB cables will be released automatically. Um, I recommend taking a picture on your phone before doing this and of course this is the power cable for your computer. Alright, for some computers all you need to do is just unscrew the screws that are over here pull the cover this way and then you can pull up this way for this type of computer it's a Dell it has a lever here on the side a side panel and all you have to do is pull the lever up this way and this is how it uncovers the good stuff inside of the computer now I'm gonna place the camera on top you can just pull the door up and put the door on a side somewhere all right, so here it is. Here's your desktop computer. You can also do this for laptop computers, but laptop computers have a different solution than a computer, a normal desktop computer that is not turning on. So here's your computer. This is your power supply. This is your CPU fan. Here are your RAMs. Normally there's more than one RAM, but for this video, I'm only gonna work on one RAM so you can see. This is your CD-ROM drive, and this over here is your hard drive. And of course, this beautiful thing over here is the motherboard, and this is what, this is what makes everything happen now this over here is a CMOS battery it actually is in charge of the BIOS that keeps the settings uh, live like your date and time and the boot menu this is what keeps those saved while your computer's off even if you have the computer unplugged it keeps it saved so the solution for a computer that turns on you can hear it turning on you can hear the fan running and everything but nothing is showing up on the screen 90 percent of the time the reason why this happens is because of your rams the rams might be a little bit dusty they might need a little bit of cleaning now if your computer if you open your computer and you find it dusty i recommend for you to buy this amazing tool that blows air to the computer it's small it's tiny it's efficient and it works 100 percent more better than those cans that spray a little bit and sometimes it gives a little bit of cold residue which is fine that's the part of the chemical reaction that happens but i recommend for you to buy this tool i will put a link in the description below it's an amazing air blower small it's this big and i use it for my clients all the time it's fast and easy to set up i'll again keep a link in the description below all right guys so i'm going to show you how to remove your ram from the computer and how to clean it properly all right so there's two levers over here there's two plastic levers and all you have to do is push very slowly and the ram should pop up like this there we go and now over here those are the connectors for the rams if these connectors are dirty or they have a little bit of dust around them they can be cleaned very easily using a simple eraser I recommend the white eraser it is much better I just don't have one right now I actually ended up finishing mine and I had to go buy this now I couldn't find the other one but I recommend for you to use the white eraser and they work fine they work good for this but you have to use it very slowly so these are the connectors so a little bit very just very slowly just rub those connector slowly make sure you don't hit these capacitors you will break your ram and your ram will never work again okay so just clean those connectors very slowly okay and then wipe away any residue and from the other side same thing very very slowly get all that residue out all right all that residue out and over here get those undusted 
with that blower or if you have a spray can to get the input over here uh, the RAM input areas get them undusted get that dust out of them now, please do not blow on them with your own mouth try to get a can or buy that air blower you will need it because it's way more powerful from those cans it will get the dust out of the entire computer plus the power supply that is over here all right, so let's plug that RAM in. Now be very careful when plugging in that RAM. Make sure that this tip opening over here lines up with the output over here connector. And I'll show you how to plug it in correctly. All right. Press on it and those plastic pieces should go back aside. All right. Now, after this is done, plug your computer in the electricity and see if it works. Now, if it doesn't and you're still having a problem, all you, and if you have more than one RAM, you can pick and choose RAMs. Like try to test the computer if it will run on one RAM or two RAMs or three RAMs. If you put the fourth one and it doesn't run and you try to change places, that means that RAM went bad. I will put a link in the description for what RAMs you should buy for your computer. But of course, each computer has a different type of RAM. Some computers have DDR3s now, some computers have DDR4s. You might have eight gigs, you might have six gigabytes. Well, the other problem that you might be facing is your computer not turning on at all, you don't hear any fans, you don't hear anything, and that might be because of your power supply. Now, this happened many times, make sure that the power supply cable is completely pushed in and the electricity that is coming from your wall is doing well. If <clears throat> everything else is working fine, we will go ahead by replacing this power supply over here. Now, with a screwdriver, Behind the computer over here, there are four screws that are holding in your power supply. And now, I must mention, this computer has a different power supply than any other computer. So make sure if you order another power supply for your computer, it must be the same power supply. Because this power supply will not fit on your computer, and the other power supply will also not fit in this computer. This specific computer needs the same power supply in order for it to start working again. All right, so this is just a broad video and the steps are the same for even any other computer. Okay, so well, there are four screws over here on the back side of the computer that are holding in the power supply. Let's get that removed. Down below over here, there is a, a metal holder here that holds the power supply in place. If you push down on it and you push in the back of the power supply after you remove the screws, the power supply can get released like this. Now, after getting the power supply released, we must remove the power supply from the motherboard and from the other parts that the power supply is connected to. Now the first thing is the ATX over here, the little, if you see it, there is a little hinge that you could press and pull very slowly. And there's the CPU power over here that you can also press on and pull very slowly and it will come out. Now this power supply, it only comes with these two cables and connectors that you connect to the motherboard. This is because this specific device comes this way. The other types of power supplies comes with more than one cable that is connecting the hard drive, connecting the CD-ROM and connecting any other components that you have. All right, so now I'm going to show you regarding your uh, other power supplies. All you have to do is start removing the connectors from the hard drive like this for example okay 
and of course your CD-ROM like this and that's how you get all of these connectors out pull the power supply aside order the same one now for this one for example the one that I just pulled out the it's a Dell of course it's a Dell and the model number of this Dell is over here so um, you can order this part if you had a Dell so most Dells and most manufactured computers OEM computers they have the model numbers on them and the manufacturer name but only for these types or the smaller types of power supplies all right so now let's plug a new power supply back in the system I'll show you how to put that in so again we're gonna put this new one over here it's other power supply we're going to make sure that the cables are on the lower side and slowly we're going to put it back in the system very slowly make sure it doesn't hit anything and then we are going to just put it back in place that lever will go back up and it will hold the power supply back in place so it won't jiggle and then we're going to insert those screws back now we're going to connect that ADX cable back in the motherboard and very slowly of course make sure don't force anything in if you force you will break stuff inside you don't want that to happen and now we are going to plug in the other side of the motherboard cable back in okay now we're going to connect the hard drive cables back in i want to show you something regarding hard drives now if you see a hard drive cable has this little notch over here this should fit in exactly in the area where the hard drive notch is because if you put it upside down and you start pressing hard on it you will break it so it should align with this notch over here let's flip that and plug it in very slowly and the same thing you do over here with the cd -ROM. and again do not force anything in all right, so I'm going to um, close the lid for this computer. Now, if you have a normal lid, all you have to do is just put it on top over here from this side and then slowly drag it in. Or regarding this one that we removed earlier, I'm just gonna just put it in those holes very slowly and then close it like that. Here we have a closed computer. Okay. All right. After closing the slit, let's get that computer up like this. Now we're gonna plug in everything back. This VGA cable over here. Very slowly, make sure it's aligned and tighten it in correctly. Mouse and keyboard in. Make sure it goes in the USB. your power supply and if you have a printer or any other equipment you can plug them in in this manner very slowly All right. okay let's put this back Alright, so now let's try to turn on the computer. <clears throat> Alright guys, so there you have it. The computer right now is trying to boot into Windows. And please give us a thumbs up for this video. Comment, don't forget to subscribe. And see you again next time for another how-to tutorial.